we start talking about the ingredients and what's actually in here, we are using whole vitamin C. Um, a lot of what you'll find is that most folks are going to use ascorbic acid and ascorbic acid is a piece of the pie. So if you think about vitamin C, you actually need vitamin C as a whole pie, right? And so that's made up of bioflavonoids, polyphenols, ascorbic acid. We like to use non-GMO ascorbic acid because uh, we don't want the genetically modified organisms that are actually running through our bodies. And so we're actually using whole vitamin C, which comes from uh, a registered trademark polyphenol C, and that includes non-GMO ascorbic acid and all of its synergists, so the polyphenols, the bioflavonoids, everything you actually need so that your body can process it. The studies have shown us that you can't actually process more than about 400 grams of ascorbic acid, but you can process almost twice that uh, if it's in its bioavailable form with all of the bioflavonoids and and polyphenols. And so that's what we actually have in uh, our Restore. When we get into the B vitamins, um, most folks are taking B vitamins uh, for energy, right? When you think about taking supplements, you want to take those for energy. Well, the challenge is when we take those um, vitamins, our bodies are going to have to do some work to help figure out how they can convert those and translate those into energy. And if those vitamins are not phosphorylated or methylated, our body's going to have to go through several extra steps, use more energy um, to actually gain some energy. So sometimes there's a net loss or uh, a negative effect that can come with that. So we want to make sure that everything is in its natural form. And so it's bioavailable, the easiest form for the body to use, and that it's either phosphorylated or methylated. And we want these B vitamins because they play critical roles in our biochemistry and everyday life, right? So they help dramatically with energy production. They help regulate stress and mood management. They help with blood, blood cell creation and brain, and brain function. They help with our cardiovascular health. The challenge is the studies have shown us that about 50% of Americans um, have a difficult time with B vitamins. Um, in other words, they don't methylate well. And so they might have an MTHFR SNP. There are a lot of studies that say that supplements don't work and vitamins don't work. The answer is yes, that's true. <laughs> the majority of them don't work. Uh, and that's because they're synthetic. Um, our bodies can't process them. And then it, you know, it turns into expensive and colorful and smelly urine. So when we think about vitamins and minerals, um, the body has to use its resources um, to convert whatever we put into that. And if it's synthetic or non-biological, it has to do more work. So we want to make sure that it's in that form that our bodies can process. When we're stressed out, when we're not eating the appropriate nutrients in our food, uh, then we're not able to get that. And so then we take some additional supplementation. We want to make sure that it's in the right forms. When we dive in and we start talking about cost, um, these are updated costs for our um, most recent batch of Restore. So when we're looking at costs and synthetic versus natural and biological. So we have vitamin B1, that's thiamine mononitrate or the thiamine hydrochloride. There's a HCL, um, two things that you want to look for when you're actually looking for synthetic um, products to see if they are methylated. If you remember the last slide, you'll see phosphorylated or methylated would be the natural version. Um, so we have $81 a kilo or $2,100 a kilo. We're actually putting in the Benfopure at the Benfotiamin. The B2, which is the riboflavin hydrochloride, there's that HCL again, or we have the riboflavin 5-phosphate, $92, $418. The niacin or niacinamide, which then has to go from nicotinamide, then to NAD, then to NAD+, adds a couple of hydrogens, then ends up at NADH. So when we talk about methylated formula, this is the fast pass. Right? So we're saving your body four extra steps that happen to happen millions of times in our body in the bioavailable or the methylated form. You have to pay a little bit more for that. Um, we pay a little bit more for that. Um, most people can actually process niacin, but we want to make sure that we're giving it to you so you don't have to do the extra four steps each time. If we move on down, we have folic acid at $25 a kilogram or the methylated version, which is a 5-MTHF. We're using metafolin as a registered trademark. That's $19,680 a kilogram. This is what we're using in Restore. When we talk about the, the cyanocobalamin or the synthetic version of B12 and then the methylated version, um, we're actually using two forms, the methylcobalamin, uh, and the denosocobalamin. So there are a couple of things that we want to pay attention to in the right forms and the right form factors so that the bodies will be able to process. About a year ago, we actually uh, went through and we said, well, wait a minute, we were using our mixed tocopherols as 
uh, vitamin E. And the studies have all shown that mixed tocopherols are a great vitamin E. The challenge is now there are some new studies out that say, well, maybe mixed tocopherols aren't so good. And so we started to dive into that, and we realized that delta gold tocotrienols could be traced from point A to point B to point C all the way through to production. And they were clinically shown to be about 50 times more bioavailable than our mixed tocopherols. So we thought, okay, well, are there any clinical studies? Well, it turns out there are over 100 clinical studies um, <laughs> on these specifically. And uh, folks are even, practitioners are now even saying that if you are recovering from a virus that might actually attack the cardiovascular system or the pulmonary system, increasing your levels of vitamin E with tocotrilinols from the annatto plant are one of the best ways that you can actually recover and help recover some of the cardiovascular loss or some of the pulmonary damage that may have happened from that. So it's pretty interesting when we take a look at all of that. Um, so we made the switch and we said, okay, well, wait, it's more bioavailable. We can actually trace it from point A to point B. It falls in line with that. And that's one of the reasons why we've actually done that.